The stock Logic Pro compressors are some of the best in the game and the only compressor you will ever need. And I'm going to show you why right now. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Mythical back again. And this time I'm going to show you why I think the stock Logic Pro compressor may be the only compressor you will ever need. But if this is your first time on my channel, welcome, it's great to have you. If you wanna stay up to date with more Logic Pro 10 tips and tricks, consider subscribing. And if you haven't, consider support on Patreon if you want your name to be featured in my videos. Otherwise, let's just get right into it. So I'll start off by saying that this is not a tutorial on how to use a compressor, but if you want me to do a video on how to use compression, I will definitely do a video in the future. This is mostly just determining how much harmonic distortion, color, and warmth your compressor is adding to your tracks. And there's a couple of different tests that we're gonna do to determine that. But first, what we're going to do is just look at our test oscillator. And the test oscillator is located under your utility test oscillator. And I just chose mono because it's a mono track. I chose 100 hertz for the frequency and this is all it looks like. And I, I kept the output as no output because we don't need to hear a constant tone of 100 hertz on a sine wave. That will destroy our ears and it will not be pleasant. So what we're going to do is just use this as a visual representation as to what the compressor is really doing as far as um, the harmonic distortion side of things. Before I actually get into the first test, I'm just gonna quickly go over the compressors. And the Platinum Digital is the original Logic Pro compressor. This is a very, very transparent compressor that despite pushing it to its limits will not color your tracks whatsoever. The Studio VCA is inspired by the Focusrite Red compressor. It's got very low harmonic distortion. It's a nice fast attack. It's great on instruments with dynamic harmonics like piano. The Studio FET is inspired by the 1176 Blackface compressor. Super fast attack, it's excellent on drums and vocals. The classic VCA is inspired by the DBX160 compressor. It is very clean, it has very low harmonic distortion. The vintage VCA is the glue compressor. This is inspired by the SSL bus compressor. I use it all of the time on my master bus and other instrument buses. The vintage FET is similar to the 1176 Blue Stripe. It is also great on drums and vocals. This one definitely has an aggressive coloring. And finally, the vintage Opto is inspired by the LA-2A optical tube compressor. It has really nice warm distortion and is superb on vocals and piano, bass, groups, or even the entire mix. All right, so test number one. By virtue of having a compressor on your channel strip without it actually doing any compression, is it influencing any of the signal whatsoever? Is it adding any harmonic distortion or flavor, or warmth, just by it being on there? Well, let's find out. So let's go to our channel EQ and just make sure our gain is at max so we can see everything. And let's go to our compressor. Everything is at zero so a one-to-one -one ratio threshold is at zero so there's no compression makeup gains at zero input and output gain are at, at zero as well so the signal is running through the compressor but i do not see any signal being altered in any way let's try the studio vca studio fet classic vca vintage vca vintage FET and Vintage Opto. So it's clear that without introducing any of the compression, there is no change to the signal intrinsically. So by virtue of having the compressor on your channel strip, the signal running through is actually not altered whatsoever. So the next test that we're gonna do is introduce the harmonic distortion function that Logic has on its compressors. And as you can see that we still have that main sine wave note, we'll turn it to soft. And you'll see that as we introduced the harmonic distortion, we are getting some extra signal. So let's just say with the same settings that we had before, we'll just cycle through the compressors and see if there's any change whatsoever. Studio VCA, Studio FET, Classic VCA, 
vintage VCA, vintage FET, and vintage Opto. So interestingly enough, by cycling through, there is no change with the settings that I have right now just by having the harmonic distortion on soft. If we did it on hard, there is also no difference. In fact, there's less. So we'll just keep it on soft. Now that we know that by introducing the harmonic distortion function on the compressor, every compressor is identical with these settings. It's not until we start introducing actual compression that we start seeing some harmonic distortion change to our signal. So let's do that right now. We'll turn off the distortion and we will start introducing some mild compression. So we're still on the platinum digital compressor. We still have that one sine wave note. And as we start to decrease the threshold, we introduce some compression. So all I am seeing is a decrease in volume from the sine wave. As I further move the threshold down, the volume of that sine wave becomes less and less as expected with compression. Let's do this with the Studio VCA and so on. Very interesting. So as I move the threshold down on the Studio VCA compressor, we start to see a little bit of change in harmonic distortion furthering coloring our actual signal. Okay, great. And this is on a mild compression. All right, let's move to the FET. Very interesting. Classic VCA, the vintage VCA, the FET, and the Opto. Okay, so now that we know where we are with a two to one ratio, let's really just jack up the settings and see what's really going on under the hood. So I'm gonna put my output at a positive 30 on my output gain, and I'm really making the settings far accentuated, something that you'll never ever ever use on your mix. This is just something to see what kind of activity is going on under, under the hood of the compressor. So even at a positive 30 output gain on the Platinum Digital, we are getting essentially no harmonic distortion, no coloring of the sound. There's a little bit of a spike at 300, but it takes all of this extra gain to really achieve any of that. So essentially zero, I call that a wash. So let's go to the Studio VCA. Look at that. Let's try the Studio FET. Even more, very, very cool. And this is on a mild two to one ratio. So even at small compression settings, we are still getting some kind of color into our signal. Let's try the classic VCA. The vintage VCA. A lot more, especially up in the 4K and above, we are getting a lot more signal. Pretty similar with the vintage FET. And what about the Opto? It kind of cuts off at the 3K, but now that we are out of compression options, let's start to jack up the compressor settings to let's say five to one. And the more we push that ratio, the more we drop that threshold, we're starting to see a little bit more signal being introduced in the upper regions of the EQ. So above 4K, we're starting to see a little bit more activity. Definitely more in the Vintage FET. The Vintage VCA has a lot more activity, especially up at 5K. Still nothing really with the Classic VCA and the Studio FET and the Studio VCA look pretty similar. So yeah, if you found this helpful, please share it with a friend who may also find it helpful. Give it a like, or if you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. Otherwise, I will see you next time.